Buffalo's agent wanted him to play Cloud Strike. And then I came on screen, and they're like, no, that's Cloud. All between Cloud and Sephiroth <laughs> all the time, so. Shall I give you despair, Steve? That's cool, yeah, I'm, I'm just getting into this. I'm gonna start playing the games now. <laughs> we go to Japan, is there, do they do cons in Japan? They, they but we do don't do the Japanese voice, they're not gonna know us. Doesn't matter, they would love to see the Some, <laughs> So funny. Less acting, please, Mr. Burton. Less acting. You're watching convention coverage. Yeah, something like that, right. you know? You could be like, oh man, I'm having a great day here at SAC Anime. Kupo! Kupo! Oh, there you go. <laughs> George, don't ever do that again. Thank we'll you so never, much. Never, ever do that again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Do that. That's going to be the best thing. They're like, oh my God, they all said Kupo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And now there's gonna, I did be, not. there's gonna be some fan art of like Cloud and. No, Cloud did not say Koopa. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna make that clear right now. Not interested in that, so. You, uh, you're not keeping it Koopa right now, you know that? <laughs> Sorry. I apologize. I use them at the grocery store, that's all I do. That's all I do. So let me say, it's, it's a pleasure to be here on stage with both of you today. Um, I, was, uh, I was really shocked when they asked me to do this. And I was like, oh man, it, it's really great. Because I actually, um, I have got to watch Advent Children. And I actually watched it recently mm. with my community and awesome. everything. And then following up more into this and seeing like the voice acting of these characters. And it, it's so crazy to think like so many years ago, you know, when this, was, when this game came out on the PlayStation 1, there's no voices for these characters essentially, right? You just kind of like have to imagine what they sound like. And then you guys have brought these characters to life. Now, I, I want to mm. ask, of course, before we get into our Q&A section, uh, how did that feel to kind of be known as the, pre the, the actors to bring those characters? Like, what's it like for you guys? For me, I didn't, like any uh, voiceover job, you just think it's a one day, it's echoey in here, isn't it? Hello, hello. Um, I just thought it was a one day, um, is this better? Is that still, but it's, it's echoey, it's the room. Um, I just thought it was a one day job. Um, and it was just doing the, the English dub for um, the Japanese actor who was, <coughs> Oh, very good, very, very good, very good. Uh, just impossible to get the mouth flap just right. He would say things and I would have to cram a whole sentence in like the se a second and a half. But, um, but I thought it was a one day, one day job. So um, it turned into, I don't know, eight, 18, 17 years or something crazy like this. Yeah. And that I would be coming and talking about this, um, this series of movies and games and whatnot. But um, it, it, it's humbling. Uh, and it's uh, kind of a, a kick in the pants to get to do it. I, I, people just love Final Fantasy and especially love Sephiroth. They just uh, seem to really love that, that, that character. And, uh, and he's, such an, he's such an interesting character, really. You know, I was, I was reading or watching something on YouTube today talking about the origins of Sephiroth. I don't know if you guys are familiar the origin story of I think they're, I think they Oh, are. I think they do. Yeah. And I, I don't think you're going to tell them anything they don't I, know. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I, you guys are way, way uh, on another level than I am, I'll tell you that. But it, <laughs> it's really fascinating, the, the detail, how he started and, uh, you know, the professor and his wife and they had the impregnation and the child became a little DNA of this and that and then it kind of, so I don't know how much it evolved <clears throat> uh, after he, after Sephiroth was fully formed, but the, the, right before that it was nuts. Anyway. To answer your question, it was a humbling and um, uh, almost, uh, as has gone on, a little sort of an awesome, awesome uh, role to be able to get to do for so long. And for you two, same question, how does it Yes, go? so can I tell you guys how I got the job? Could go you, you hear that story? Yes. Go for it. And so I'll just tell you the background. This is my second convention ever. Um, I did my first one in Phoenix with George. Yep. Uh, is Ashley here? She's not here, Ashley Strife. but she's been, uh, she's been trying to get George and I together for like 10 years mm -hmm. and it finally happened last yep. year. So, um, so I just got a call and they wanted me to come in to audition. I wasn't trying to do voiceovers. This was for Kingdom Hearts, um, Cloud and Kingdom Hearts. That mm -hmm. was my first, that was my first job as Cloud. And um, so what happened was it was Disney at the, at the time who did the video game and I had just done a movie called The Last Castle <clears throat> with Robert Redford, James Gandolfini, and Mark Ruffalo. And um, uh, I guess the story goes that they were screening The Last Castle because Mark Ruffalo's agent wanted him to play Cloud Strife. And um, then I came on, on screen and they're like, no, that's Cloud. And that's how I literally got the job. Oh, wow. And I, I, no auditioning, sorry, George. Oh, man. Um, 
So it was amazing, and you know, I get there and I get to do uh, this this voice and create this character, which is incredible. But the coolest thing was we've never really, we'd never met each other until la till Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. We would kind of talk on Twitter every now and then, but we never met each other. But I would always hear this amazing voice when I would go do my voices for all the games and, fi and Final Fantasy, especially. And I'm like, who is this guy? Like this voice is <laughs> Sephiroth, this incredible voice. It's like one of the greatest voices I've ever heard. And there I am, I'm just like, not interested. You know, just, <laughs> I mean, he does this great voice and it's well, just not interested. And, and all this stuff, and it's just, it, it's been such an incredible journey because, I, you know, I played video games growing up, and to be a part of something like this and, and this kind of iconic character has been such a blessing, and um, it's just, it's great to be here today and hopefully get to meet some of you guys because I really haven't done this before, so thank you, and thank you for, you know, just loving the, uh, the battle between Cloud and Sephiroth <laughs> all the time, so... Shall I give you despair, Steve? <laughs> Shall I? <laughs> you know, it's funny you talk about the, uh, that you, you feel like your, your voice was just not interested. Yes. But the voice direction from the Japanese um, creators to the American director was they, want, they wanted as little yeah. inflection as possible. For like, you too? Yes. What? Um, my gosh. Yeah, well, look, go crazy. back and so, watch it. He so just, the, the tonal level is about from one, <laughs> zero to one, you know, and it's yeah. super low. Yeah, so, so I don't know if you guys really know how it works, so we would, <clears throat> we would do it in a studio in Burbank. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then they'd always have um, somebody from Square or somebody from Japan Square Enix, yeah. there to, to uh, translate right because they shoot it all the time first in japanese and then we would have to fit the, the sentence the english into the mouth movement so it's not your typical voiceover like if you're you know <coughs> watching shrek be made where they're actually talking to you and then they move the the, the mouth to the actor so it was so funny because you'd have to do a line sometimes 10 times just to go yeah. and they did watch it back they go oh it matches yeah and then um but what you're saying what you were saying was like you know I, I, no emotion. I, I came no from emotion. A, a soap opera called General <laughs> Hospital, and I really had no personality on that show. Either. Hey now, hey now. Hey no, now. I, it's true. So I, I'm trying to do something new, you know, like, hey, give Cloud some personality. And I'd be like, I'm not interested. And they're like, um, that's way too much. That's too much, Steve. Dial not, it down. Dial no, what it do down you mean, dial, they just, just say not interested. <laughs> not interested. Uh, oh, perfect, it's moving it's on. It. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> I'm trying to act here. <laughs> So funny. Less acting, please, Mr. Burton. Less acting. Yes. Yeah. So. So uh, one of the things I, I like to ask a lot of actors on this: Do you have any hilarious moments from the booth? Hilarious moments from the booth. Um, oh gosh. Uh, mm. Well, not. Uh, so I wouldn't not, say hilarious, but you, when you're doing these voices, and George has done so, you know, a lot more voice work than I have. You have to. You really can't have any inhibitions when you're doing this. Like, I think in Final Fantasy, there was a, a motorcycle wreck and they strung together like 60 sound effects, like of him, of Cloud, you know, rolling around in the street, like, you know? So it's like, you can't have, and, and, all the, and all the damage hits that you take, you just can't have any inhibitions. You just gotta go for it, right? Yeah. And um, so we, we had to cut that into like four sound effects at once uh -huh. to string it together. Yeah, that's cool. And so it's, you know, it's not something hilarious that happens because when I first went in there, I was super nervous. And then you just have to just have no inhibitions when it comes to the, to the sound effects at all. Well, but those end up being my favorite things to do by the end of it, so. They're also, the, they're also kind of really strange sound effects in their fighting sequences. It's yeah. a lot of like, uh, yeah, uh, I did, yeah, I didn't know you made it like you'd made a sound if you jumped off a platform. You're right. Like, <clears throat> but just really little ones. It seems like it would be much, much more dramatic than that, yeah. but it's kind of cool. I think it goes with the style of the fight scenes and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so, and the Japanese actors would do it first, so we would have something to go off of, yep. at least, um, because to do that from scratch, that's very difficult. Yeah, indeed. Well, in terms of funny stories, uh, there are no really super duper funny stories other than the fact that when you when you have a four hour session, you're constantly drinking water or eight. And I'm, or, I had a couple eight hours. Oh, you do. Oh God, I can't yeah. Long. But uh, you're constantly drinking water, so every about after, at minute thirty, I'm like, 
I got to take a break. <laughs> so then it's, it's it does it turns into a running joke by the end. I'm you know going to the bathroom sometimes. <clears throat> but other than that, it's just pretty. It's uh, pretty concentrated four hour work. And there, but there's nobody else there. See, that's the other thing. <clears throat> we didn't work with the other actors on Justice League. For when I did Superman and with all the other actors, we were all together That's all awesome. the time, most all the time. So there was something to play off of, you know, we're looking at each other, we're laughing, blah, blah, blah. For this, it's, you know, dubbing basically in a dark room um, with dark, the, dark you can't even room. see the director, you're like, uh, are you there? Was it good? Um, but and sometimes, but sometimes we would actually see the, the animation and then sometimes you wouldn't, right? You'd see the yeah, scene right, right, before right. it was done, which was cool. But well, it's then. also mocked up. Sometimes they'll have the skeleton of like motion capture or whatever. Sometimes it looks like it's not fully finished. Um, but uh, the process is pretty, pretty intense to see how those video games get made. Especially now. I mean, we're not in the remake. Apparently, I someone told me we're not in it. <laughs> um, but uh, but that, that I've seen the graphics in that, and it looks really great. Honestly, the voices, yeah, whatever. But the graphics are incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Not really. You know, it's, uh, it's really interesting when you're talking about like the like the grunt sounds and everything. Because I, I think remember like back like when voice acting really became a thing in gaming, and they started bringing, bringing people in to do like trans you know translate it over yeah. and stuff. Right before you would have like the English voice actors for any for just a lot of games in general, yeah. but then all the grunts would be the Japanese voice yeah, actors. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, you know, as a kid playing this, I'm like, I'm not really thinking too much into it. I'm not, I, I don't pay attention to this, right? But then, you know, if I go into it now and I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound like cloud. Huh. That's, a, that's a much more, it's a much more weird pitch. Totally. I think there was one thing I didn't do and that was Smash Brothers. Because um, somebody would probably ask, ask that today. Because well, no, I think Smash, yeah, but it's a non-union. It was non-union, yeah. So, so we yeah. couldn't, George and I couldn't do it. So, um, that's why. Yep. Not that you asked, or that you probably care. So thank you. <laughs> I want you to know I care. Thank you for caring, Jay. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Coupo. <laughs> um, sorry. Perfect. I had to do it. Talk about uh, Advent Children. That's okay for a little bit yeah. too on that one for a second. Uh, and then dang King it, Hearts. I should have watched it again. <laughs> you no, know, it's okay. It's okay. Um, like, was that like was the initial reaction when you know when you guys were told that you're doing stuff for like Kingdom Hearts and uh, you know Advent Children stuff too, right. that one? How did that feel to kind of like know what you're taking on? Did you have an idea of which the roles that you were really taking on? Because Final Fantasy is obviously throughout the years had different iterations, right? Right. And the stories, I, I only found this out this year. And this, please, please don't you know judge me on this. I just played my first Final Fantasy game ever this year. Wow. Wow. Fourteen. Fourteen. Good. 14. And Am I, I just, in that one? Huh? Am I in that one? No. Dang. <laughs> if it's any consolation, I'm not in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, that's I'm, good. I'm yeah. not in that, so. It's good. Yeah. Thanks. But, um, Thanks, Jay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you guys have an idea of, like, the roles you were taking on, like, how big of those characters were when you... No. Were, no, I had no, I had no idea. At all. Zero idea. Yeah. No idea. It, it but just, the, the, it was cool going to the... They, they really treated that movie um, like a... Big did you go to film. the screening? I did, did go to the screening. Uh, well, we yeah. were there at the same time. Yeah. My, my son it was yeah. like this. Uh, yeah, it was I a, was so blown was, away by that. Wow. They know how to do it. Yeah, sure. man. We, so. they had, it was at the ArcLight? Was it ArcLight yeah, in Arc Hollywood? Uh, yeah, in Sunset, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Um, so I didn't really know. Um, but it's obviously the popularity has grown. We've done it for so long. And now I realize what a you know iconic character it is. And it's just amazing yeah. to be a part of that whole thing. Yeah. So. Have you ever thought about uh, cosplaying as your characters? I'm cosplaying right now. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed. Who are you? <laughs> um, Steve Burton as George Newburton <laughs> talking in a... Uh, no, I don't I think know. I'd, probably be... Be, I'd rather, you know, be Sephiroth, I think, yeah. loud, so... Yeah. No. I just like um, to wear that wig around. Just like, no comment, just wear the wig around town. You know, I mean, no. I have thought about it, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. I have thought about it. But I see a lot of great clouds in here, and I don't know. If yeah, that eat might, eat with exactly. You I mean, guys they're really going for it, and I don't know if beat I us could. To the... Can I get all that on Amazon, or no? Or do I have to no. make some of this? Do you guys make most I mean, of your stuff, or, or buy it? Some, You make yeah. it? Make? Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really impressive. Yeah. Really cool. But I have seen a lot of cool stuff on, on, online, so... Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to ask that, because this, uh, I'm not sure, uh, I mentioned this to you yesterday when I met you, yep. um, about 
Sephiroth was trending this week, if you guys, or this past week, all right. if you all didn't know this. Um, <laughs> and the reason for this is, um, for many of you who don't know out there, there's a thing called uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. And there is a wrestler by the name of Kenny Omega. And he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. And he's known because he's a big Final Fantasy fan. He's finishing moves called the One Wing Angel. And this guy got permission from Square Enix. And he shows up at this big event at the Tokyo Dome playing the Sephiroth theme and wow. showed up dressed up fully, in, well, cool. except for the hair, of course, the long, beautiful, flowing hair. Yeah. Man, I wish I had that. <clears throat> um, <laughs> <laughs> that's making me jealous. But he showed up a Sephiroth and walked down to the stage of that. It was, yeah. it was amazing. It was trending on Twitter yeah. like all week. I see Did they tag George in I that? I see or an no? opportunity. I didn't see it, but we, we, should, cool. we should get that guy in one of these uh, rooms. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. Um, so my question is, what is your favorite uh, part of getting into character as Cloud and Sephiroth? I mean, when I play Dungeons and Dragons, I love to be evil. Uh -huh. That's just me. But I bet you guys definitely have something that's your favorite part about getting into like the headspace, I suppose. <clears throat> For me, uh, <clears throat> it's it's um, it's really hard on on the voice to um, to, to go that low in your register. So. For me, to get into character, I kind of have to warm my voice up and sort of get down in this register because I don't speak down here all the time. <laughs> and it's, not, it's, it's actually really not good for your vocal cords to do that. <laughs> but, um, but mentally, I like to sort of get down in that vocal range and sort of relax and order coffee. I'll have a double venti latte. <laughs> <laughs> So, what do you what do you say? Yeah, um, for me, I you know I I learned how to kind of warm up my voice. I was in a cover band for five years, and wow. and they, and they were they were warning me. They're like, I think your voice is changing. You're screaming a little too much. <laughs> like, I'd come in. They go, we gotta we gotta schedule it like after yeah. that you've been on the road for a little while, yeah, yeah. just so your voice can heal. But you know, the thing about Cloud was. Um, for me, emotionally, there was a lot of emotion. It might, may not have seemed like there was, but to you, I really had to get a lot of the times to a highly emotional state just to say a line that I felt, you know, really maybe didn't have a, a lot of impact, but I wanted, I wanted the emotion to come through in, in the voice. So, you know, as an actor, a lot of times you don't want to do those things. You don't want to have to go to that emotional place to get yourself, you know, almost ready to cry essentially mm. <clears throat> so with cloud i felt i had to do that i had to give him some emotion even though he seemed pretty monotone a lot of the times i wanted to make sure that i was emoting something as as cloud so um you know you just got to get ready because you never knew what you were going to be you, you didn't know the script and it didn't really matter because they sent me the script the first time, you know, and I'm and I'm running lines and like I'm, just like, you know, no, just, I'm actor cloud running lines and then I get there, they're like, forget just everything forget all that just stuff. did. Let's, let's do it line by it. line, moment so, by moment. Yeah. So. so thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, <laughs> What's happening? You mostly do film acting, right, Steve? Um, TV primarily. I've, I've done some film, but TV mainly. <gasps> Well, I don't know if George Newbern has like a similar background, but I'm also just kind of interested in the way that, because um, TV, film, mostly realistic, representational versus something that's like uh, a character like Cloud or Sephiroth, mm -hmm. very much uh, more archetypal, right. maybe coming from a more mythological or stylized place. Mm -hmm. What's the experience of acting for something that's sort of like, you know, a real physical live action thing versus something that's a little bit more like, you know, you have to find all sorts of different ways to be sure. kind of like cool and and pretty and kind of have that style sure. instead. That's a good, quite, really good question. Um, so, you know, it's funny because I was on a soap opera and I am on a new soap opera now for a long time. And people always thought there was a, there was a difference between soap opera acting and film acting. And really, there shouldn't be any difference. Right. Because acting is acting. We want to tell the truth. We want you to believe what we're saying. So I kind of took that into anything I do. I want to make this character real. I want to make him you know, as dimensional as possible and give him as much feeling and emotion as possible. So I don't really view it at, from a different perspective, which your perspective was great, how you explain that. You're very smart. I'm not. So I barely got what you said. Um, so, but I just come at it as an actor, you know, first, like who, who is this character and, and how can I bring him to life in the most honest, believable way? Mm. I also think that you're talking about two different styles. So if something's live action, you're, you're 
you're, you're, this is us in real life. And animation, gaming or animation, it's a different style. And, it's, and especially for overdubbing for Final Fantasy, that, that video's already been shot. So you have a very truncated amount of time to deliver an emotion or especially if a game, a gaming situation, you have to do 50 different responses in a very small amount of time. So it's, it's artificial. It's art, very much artificial, but you want to be as truthful as possible in the artifice of animation. But in real, in, in live action, you're as, you know, it's what you see is what you get and you still have a character, but animation is a couple of extra layers of art, artifice that is its own, uh, it's its own art form, honestly, uh, but you approach it the same way as an actor. So. Yeah, but that's a good question because you are kind of put in a box with how we we had to do right. Final Fantasy, and then if you're doing something like I, I'm just going to say Shrek, where everybody's together and they're doing the scene together, right? They're like, oh, let's just do it again, right? So they can have freedom. We didn't have a lot of we didn't have a lot of freedom in that box. We just had to bring what we could right. bring right. to that to that moment. Right. Thank, you. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks. Um, despite even though re being recast. Ested, um, how do you feel that the fans still view you as like the definitive versions of Cloud or Sephiroth and just the warm fan reception? Oh, it's, oh, it's amazing. Fantastic. It's so sweet. I get yeah. uh, most of my Twitter feed is like <laughs> talking about how much yeah. they love. Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to play a character like this, I feel, for me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the support shows it and the love shows it. Yeah. And look, li life happens, things happen in life. They're going to recast. We've all been recasted and fired before. Yeah. It's not a big it deal. Happens. It happens. You know, we just know that's part of the business. Is it disappointing? Sure. But, you know, one door closes, another opens. Yep. And, um, you, keep you know, let me just keep But going. as we keep coming to these cons, there, there are still a lot of folks that want yeah. to see us and talk to us. So that's, that's also fun to get to do. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you so thank much. You, I appreciate you. Thank you. So if Square was to decide to remake another Final Fantasy game, is there a role both of you would like to strive for? Mm. Yeah, Cloud. Like pre ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sephiroth. Yeah, cloud to Strife. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've really thought about it, honestly. Um, a different role in. I don't know. You think the they, there, there might be a chance that they call us back at some point for maybe. some type well, of maybe. some maybe. type of hybrid, maybe? Huh? It'd be well, interesting. You know, in a, so. In Final Fantasy XIV, it's, it's an MMO. It's an online yeah. one, right? You uh -huh. play with a bunch of friends. And they usually do a lot of events where they, you know, bring in, like, references from other games right. into yeah. it. Yeah. I think it'd be pretty cool if fourteen, you know, brought you guys to voicing characters that were homages to Cloud and Sephiroth. That would be cool with that, don't yeah. you guys think? Yeah, man. Be cool. yeah. Let them know. Let them know. I get a lot of, I actually get a fair amount of requests from people call, uh, DMing me and asking, say, hey, can I, would you do, here's a script, would you let me put your Sephiroth's voice into cut uh, video of other things? And I can't do it because I, I probably could get in trouble for that, sure. I think so. But, uh, you know, it's really cool. I see, other, I see them lift my voice and put it in there, and I yeah. can't do anything about that, but, you know. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank hey, thanks thank for you. your question. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, my question is, what is your favorite Cloud and or Sephiroth moment uh, throughout all of the games, including like Advent Children and Kingdom Hearts? Mm. I like Man, that when I ask you, tell me what you cherish the most, and I allow me to uh, <laughs> take it from you. There's so there's so many. I mean, I, you know, it's I I can't really remember all the things that we've done. Yeah, I know. It's, Unless it's, I go on IMDb. It's, yeah. And I'm like, what the heck? Oh, ask, I did that should, too? We should oh ask my you, what is your favorite? Yeah, what moment? is your favorite? I know uh, there's, the, there's we, have, we have had a lot of battles. I, so, and, and I, Advent Children was awesome. Uh, Advent, I love, uh, I love the memory uh, quote where I'm, I'm, I'll never be a memory. I will never yeah. be a memory. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, I love your I love your fighting Kingdom Hearts too because uh, we all had canon it, it as uh, the prequel to you entering Smash. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, so yeah, that's my two, and cool. I would like to say thank awesome. y'all. You're welcome. Thank you, man. Thank thanks you, man. for thank thanks you. for uh, the question. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Good morning. Just morning. Want to say thank you for your time. Good morning. Thank, thank you. you. Now, I think it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that Final Fantasy VII really became a global phenomenon and defined a generation yeah. of gaming. Yeah, it kind of mm. did, yeah. So did. what I want to know is, like, when did you have that realization of how big it was? And right now, when you said that, I got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, when he said it was a global, I'm like, whoa, what? What? It's big. It's and, that uh, big. How did that, like, uh, impact your careers? 
Did nothing for my career. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a separate it's career. It, but it's a really kind of a separate, it's a different part of your career. Yeah, you most do. people are still figuring out that I've actually voiced cloud. Like, wow. yeah. like friends and family yeah, and stuff. Yeah. They're like, where are you going? I'm going to this convention. Yeah. I voiced a video game for yeah, 18 yeah. years. Like, what? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's such an awesome community. And it's like, I thought that movie was, you know, the Final Fantasy Advent Children was such a great movie. Um, but now that I'm more involved doing these cons, I see the, I really do see the impact uh, of Final Fantasy, and it's incredible. Yeah, I've, 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 I was in uh, Turkey uh, a couple, five years ago, and I was at the hotel and checking in with my wife, and, and uh, the person saw my name and looked up and went, Sephiroth. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what he was talking about, because it, it has an accent, and I wasn't sure it was Turkish. I didn't know, what, what is he saying? And then I figured out. It is, it's, it's moments like that, you go, wow, these, uh, you know, pop popular culture and gaming is really, truly a, um, you know, a, a international, like a, what's the word, a universal. Yeah, universal. People share yeah. that, you know. Yeah, so, so. cool. All right. Thank you for your well, time. Thanks, thank thanks you. for your yeah. question. Appreciate that. Thank you. Actually, um, if you guys listen to a lot of the music of Final Fantasy, what is your favorite soundtrack in the series? You know, I haven't, but now that I'm doing this, I've been posting and reposting a lot of, a lot of the music, because Final Fantasy has an, I guess they had an orchestra that goes around and plays these big shows, yeah, right? It's so incredible. I would be so into, I'm like, bring me, bring us. Yeah, I would Let love. Us come. Can we come? Would Please. that be so fun? I like the fight. The, 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 oh, the, one wing angel. Oh God, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely, it gives me chills. I'm glad he knew yeah. the name of that because I don't, I don't know what that it's was. The, it's called what? Hello. Yeah, it's one wing angel. It's called one wing angel. Yeah, I like awesome. the metal version from Avon Children though. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm just getting into this. I'm going to start playing the games now. <laughs> so. Do it. Do they do that on Twitch anywhere? I don't know. Oh, plenty oh. of times. Oh, really? Okay, okay yes. great. All right. Cool, cool. Thank you, George and Thank I will you. be on Twitch. and uh, Hilarious. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? To see the characters play the game. We should yeah, do that. I want a big battle on a screen right now. That Let's would be go. hilarious, actually. We should do that. That would oh. be amazing. I'm all for that. With how massive Final Fantasy is, what's the most interesting part about being a part of that and um, perhaps being the reason people get into like role playing games. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, sorry, George. No, go ahead. I, I think um, in Phoenix, I had a lot of people come up to me and who really didn't have the greatest childhoods. And they said, hey, I just want you to know that Final Fantasy got me through some tough times growing up. You know, and that meant a lot to me because I know people struggle. I know there's, you know, life happens and everyone doesn't have the greatest life and we all do have an escape. And I feel that Final Fantasy meant so much mm. to people yeah. during those formative years that it got them through some really tough times. And, and that's what I appreciate about it. Like, I love coming out and hearing the stories about this. I mean, it means so much to me. So I would say that. And obviously, you know, the community is awesome. And you guys coming out here is amazing. And I'm just starting to learn. So bear with me. Baby steps for me. I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll pull George along with me, and we'll do this together. But thank you for that question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I, what was the first part of that question? I was just trying. Um, Final Fantasy being basically the like largest RPG oh, series. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Um, I think I, I was mostly so blown away by how it seemed to grow and become more of a phenomenon as, as I kept doing it over the 10, 15 years. And when you see... When you see, um, you can lose yourself in a fantasy of Final Fantasy. It, when it's done really, really well, um, flying angels with swords yeah, it's awesome. from uh, urban metal s steampunk slash whatever <laughs> that style is, you really, like Avatar, I just saw the new Avatar a couple, uh, like a week ago, and I absolutely love that, those movies. Uh, because you completely get lost in them. And I think that's why Final Fantasy is so good. You, you can just dive in and live in that world. Yeah, the imagery is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's just, it's just such good, uh, it's good art, it's good story, it's good fighting, you know, it's a great fighting game. And the characters are, um, you know, those, the Japanese anime creators are real smart, so. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. 15 thank is you. the best game in the series, by the way. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> if you have played any of the games, 
other than the ones that your voices are in, <laughs> uh, which of the Final Fantasy games that you may or may not have played are your favorites? And if not, which one are you going to start off with? Okay, so I'll let, I'll, I'm going to ask you this. I did play Kingdom Hearts, okay? I know, I, I, I know that was 74 years ago, but... <laughs> And cloud doesn't age, so it's yeah. it's okay. But what if I'm if I'm to play to start playing the games? Which one would you tell me to play first? I'd say nine. I'm probably gonna start a fight somewhere. Uh oh, I don't, me, Final Fantasy nine. nine. Okay. Yeah, I would have the, I would have to say the same thing. I played Kingdom Hearts briefly and then went. I'm not equipped to to do this. My brain exploded. But I would I would ask you the same thing. So nine is a good starter game to, the, to play? That's what I would say. I'm sure like 20 people here are going to disagree with <laughs> okay, me. But... Okay. That's all right. all right. Hey, it's family. It's okay. There's be hilarious to actually, we should get nine up here oh. and, and play it I'm in front of people you. who really know what to do. And then like, <laughs> is there one, is there one, one V1? Can the we other. do some one V1 on that or no? No, nah, the city <laughs> is the fighting game. Okay, okay, great. That's what we'll do. Okay, perfect. Do you ever catch yourself doing the voice at random times? Because I know that if I was a voice actor, I would totally end up doing that just accidentally. Well, he has to work into it. I am just cloud. So I just walk around <laughs> talking. And some people have recognized me by my voice, which is crazy, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, but I don't try to do anything different or separate to be cloud. It's just my voice. So I have I do a lot of audio books as well, and and a lot of times in audio books, uh, in a narration of a fiction, you'll have thirty or forty different characters. So I write down all the characters in like a little sort of something descriptor that will key me into it. So uh, I'm constantly talking to myself. My wife like, will look at me and she'll just say, "Do you know you're talking to yourself?" And I will say, "Yes." I am now aware of it, but all day long I've got all these characters in my head and I, it's actually fun for me to just do it out loud. And I do all kinds of accents and I don't, and I don't, I don't want to be like I'm appropriating an Indian or a, you know, a Japanese guy, I, it, I just, but my ear hears it and I have to do it all day. Don't worry, if you want to do an Indian accent, <laughs> I'm Indian and I get I just, I, I love it. It just tickles me on the inside. I'm not making fun, but you guys all can, you guys are all gamers and you love uh, animation, but it, there's just something about it that makes you go to another place, just for a second. You know? Your icons. Sweet. I don't know. You're we'll sweet. See. You're sweet. Thank you. We'll see. If you had the opportunity to come back uh, for Cloud and Sephiroth, would you take it? 100%. Uh, of course. Immediately. Of course. There would not even be thinking about it uh -huh. at all. Because yeah. it'd be kind of big news, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yeah, <laughs> we would for sure. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. Is there a core memory during any time that you guys were acting as Sephiroth and Cloud that you guys have? Hmm. For me, it was it was because I was I was on General Hospital at the time and working a lot, and really being able to go do Cloud was a break for me. Like I was four hours, sometimes eight hours, because I had to fit fit some more time in, but sometimes eight hours just by myself in the booth where it was, like George said, it was very dark in there. Yeah. It was very cold in there. <laughs> you can barely see the director um, and you would just kind of hear the voices of people telling you what to do and you'd hear, hear uh, Japan on the line and you would just, so for me it was, I, I got super comfortable in that booth. You know, and that's and I looked for I looked forward to it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I got four hours today. Yeah, you so know, I, I think it's if it was almost meditative in a, oh, in a place, was, yeah. kind of a quiet meditative place to be, and and you're just sort of just sitting there staring at Sephiroth's head the whole time and his and his mouth, and I'm like, I'm, you just sort of zone out. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's, it's, that's my memory. So yeah, I have fond memories of of playing this character and actually recording everything I did. It was it was great. I, I actually recorded one time in Nashville. When I, I moved to Nashville, I can't remember um, what, what it was that I recorded because there was so many things, but that's when they said, um, Rita at Skylark was mm, like, yeah. hey, were you, were you on the road singing when you did right before this? I go, yeah, yeah. She goes, it's different. Your voice sounds different. And I go, really? So then I came back and did something after that, and they figured out it was the microphone. So oh. the mic did something to my voice to make it sound a little off. Interesting. And, uh, so no, anyway, no. I don't know why I said that, but <laughs> I'm just talking a nice, lot. Nice a lot of coffee up here. Nice so. to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for your Thank question. You. Thank, you. Thank you. If Cloud and Sephiroth being super iconic voices in many different properties from Kingdom Hearts to Final Fantasy, 
when it comes to your performance, which of the properties did you feel was mm. your favorite to perform for? Uh, so. It's it's always great. Like for me, the Advent Children movie was the best, right? Because Same. We, that's my answer. Yeah, because we got to go from beginning to end. Right. Right, we get to play the whole it's thing. A movie. It's, it's a movie. It's a movie, and, and it's a, a story, and you're going through the story as the actor, also, right? With games, you're not necessarily going through a full story. You know, they'll they'll break it down where you're saying, you know, one word lines, and they'll go, okay, say that, okay, say that, and then they'll interject it to, in the video game wherever they want, right? But this was a full story, and it was just awesome to be as Cloud yeah. to go to have a through line yeah. as a character, and um, and and then see the finished product was awesome. Yeah. Same answer here. <laughs> I expected nothing less. Thank you so much. Thank I you, appreciate man. you both. Thank you, man. Thank you appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, I was told um, that acting was the keep in mind when I'm acting that uh, acting is about trying to make the other person better. So I was curious if you two have uh, similar something similar you have to keep in mind. What do you say? Acting is about keep making the other per person better. Look better. Look, Look better. better. Oh, um, mm, not that, really. That's not that's not what I would. It's ever that's not ever in my head. I think. Um, when you, if you're in a scene with another actor, you, you basically um, want something from them, a right. response or, or the, to get them to do something or to feel a certain way because you, you have a, an, immediate, an immediate thing you want from them and then you want a bigger thing you want from them, like a you know, super objective and you're just immediate objective. Those are the two things. So you do that with any kind of acting. If there's no one in front of you and it's animated, uh, just imagine it. You just imagine it. Sometimes no. I got to hear his voice when we did right. stuff, and sometimes yeah. you heard mine, sometimes yeah. we didn't. Yeah. But really acting is, is really, you know, we could get into this for an hour, but we won't. But acting is reacting, right? It's, it's being honest in the moment, being present, listening to what the other, your partner's doing in the scene, and having real honest reactions to what they're doing. And then like, like George said, there's something you always want from somebody in the scene too. So it has to be active and proactive at the same time, so. Something like that. Yeah. And then they look better. Then they, then they hopefully look, everyone <laughs> seems like they're better. I mean, make each other better as an actor or, or yeah. something. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you were voicing, you know, Sephiroth, Cloud, and any like Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy, <clears throat> what was one line or anything that you said that kind of was like, wow, that hit hard? Or like that like kind of like resonates with m m me or something along those lines? It's real weird. This. It's, it's, my character is so strange uh, in many ways. Um, yeah, we but know. I, I, no, I complicated. But in, ter in terms of resonating with me, I, I think um, uh, the thing about Sephiroth that resonates with me the most is his stillness. And uh, when I can key into his stillness, that's when I um, feel uh, centered and uh, my best too. self. You know. That's a good answer. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I don't know if there's anything specific, but like I said, I'm, I'm starting to uh, learn everything here now. And um, I, just, I just like how, I like how um, still Cloud was. And, uh, you know, people always have me write lines on, on the pictures and stuff, but not interested is my favorite line ever. <laughs> it's also short. Because it's easy. <laughs> and I can deliver it pretty well every time. So, he says it all the time. All too. the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I'm actually doing more research now. I mean, this, this coming to these conventions and, and seeing the impact that Final Fantasy really, truly ha has had, um, I'm diving in. So, Thank you, guys. Next year, maybe. I'll have some more better answers for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I just recently got back from Japan. I studied abroad the last four months. Cool. Sweet. Um, and Final Fantasy VII, incredibly big in Japan. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's, there's merchandise everywhere, even though it's been a while since the last remake right, game right, came out. Right, 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 sure. So I was wondering, are you guys aware of how big it is in Japan, and have you been Should we go to Japan? Is there, do they do cons in Japan? They, they but we do don't do the Japanese voice. They're not going to know us. It doesn't matter. They would love to see the American. <laughs> yeah. We have I'd to convince to them that they would love I'll, to see I'd love to go to Japan. Yeah, you, right? you would be surprised, because a lot of, there was a lot of Western things I wouldn't think we're popular in Japan that were like Charles Schultz's Peanuts, Thomas yeah. the Tank Engine, uh -huh. Dead by Daylight, very wow. popular in Japan, interesting. And very Western, really interesting. Um, and yeah. even the voice of Dante from Devil May Cry, uh, yeah. he they know him in Japan. They still have a Japanese dub of Devil May Cry. Cool. Well, so, maybe we're going to Japan. Cool. Yeah, cool. we didn't know how big. It, I mean, I I knew how big it was, but I'd love to go there. So, thank you for that question. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Do you have anything to say to any aspiring voices? 
voice actresses mm -hmm. and actors, where to get started or anything in general mm. that's a he's, question. He's going to be able to give you more information than I am. But I'm going to say this. If that's something you want to do, you need to follow it 100%, right? And not give up at all. You know, if that's your dream and your passion, you need to go for that. And George can tell you way better than I can on how to get started. <laughs> well, I mean, it, with anything, uh, if you said, I want to be an actor, I want to be a voice actor, uh, anything having to do with acting, you need to be in a class ab about how to be an actor. Because you can do mimicky voices, and that's fine, but it, you go to the next level when you, when you learn about what acting is. And, and you can go to a community college or local, wherever you are, or do you do an online? They have online classes that you can do with, in Zoom with, with people if you can't yeah. find something in your area. But, but it's really about um, learning about what standing on a stage first before you do any voice mm -hmm. acting and being, they call it being private in public, meaning the audience is looking for you to expose something that's you maybe just have a private moment with yourself that's embarrassing or whatever, but you need to be able to have that embarrassing moment in front of people that's the first step of, of learning to be an actor. And when you can do that, you just apply it to the, the voice. The, the voice acting is an extension of just acting. And it's, there's some technique-y things that you can do. And you can take technique voiceover classes for that. But don't do any of that until you take an acting class to find out if you're a good actor. If you like it, if you love it, you keep doing it and you will get better. And you will get better and better and better. And voice acting will come from that. But that would be my yeah. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, Thanks. no problem. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> but I just want to know kind of why voice acting? Because I might potentially pursue it in the future. Mm -hmm. I play a lot of video games. I like to emote a lot with mm -hmm. my voice. Mm -hmm. So sure. I'm just kind of wanting to know what made you guys want to get into it. Well, we were, we were both actors first, and then we went into voice acting, right? So what George said earlier was that you really have to be an actor first, to voice act, right? Some people have amazing voices, but they can't act. And you guys probably have seen some video games where that's true, right? So, yeah, no? Yeah. Okay. So, so you know, you do have to become an actor. And then, then you can start, like George can do accents, he can do different voices, and he's just adding things to the arsenal, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm one voice, I'm horrible at accents, except for Southern, <laughs> and that's all I got, right? So, but, but being an actor, obviously, is why they called me for cloud, right? So, yeah, I, I, um, uh, yeah. Why voice acting? For for me, it was just I've always been love the sound of things. The sound. It's all, also this is kind of not off track, but English. The English approach to acting and the American school of acting are two two different schools. And the right. English, they will have classes in diction and the you know um, Shakespeare and a lot of the classics are are written to sound a certain way when you say them, you know, um, ba 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 And it gives meaning to the, uh, the sound gives meaning to the larger idea of the author. Mm -hmm. And so the English, I've, I'm more of an English, I have an English ear for things, and that's how I respond to, to things. That's probably to answer your question. Then in the American version, which is how do you feel, and then you, then you emote, where the English say, <clears throat> say it, make the face, and then the emotion will come. And if you need to cry, make your face into a, you know what I mean? And you, if you do it, if you go, what does it feel like to cry? And you make your face a certain way, you do start to feel tears, you know? Whereas the American goes, do not do that until you have the exact That's me. feeling. Well, <laughs> that's how I go. Yeah. So, so, but be a, become an actor, you know, and study acting and keep doing voices. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you too for joining us here today. Thank you guys. Hey, thank you guys for taking your time out today. We appreciate it.